Angels are saying, Be so confident in who you are that you're wiling to eat alone, sleep alone, do the inner healing work, and flourish without approval. And whenever you find yourself doubting how far you can go, remind yourself how far you've come. You're always stronger than you think you are. Do not think like a human. You have the ability within you to create anything you wish. Truth is, you are highly powerful entities, walking on this planet as simple biological beings, and the disguise fools everyone, even yourself. You haven't been sentenced to a life of frustration and stress. You don't have to be stuck in your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. God has something far better for you. We all want peace and freedom, and the good news is it may be closer than you think. The Bible teaches that, for those who follow Jesus, peace is a mindset. If you're not at peace, it's your choice. In the next few months, the economy more than likely won't change. Your work situation won't change. Your broken relationships may not get healed, but your mindset can change. That will be the difference between a life of self-destruction and a life of peace. The Bible says in Romans 8, 5, 6, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you better thoughts, thoughts that bring peace, not frustration. You need to look at your situation differently, in the Holy Spirit way. Will you look at your life the way you've always looked at it? Or will you look at it the way God does? Remember, the mind governed by the flesh is death. Choosing to look at your situation through your own lens is self-destructive. Ask the Holy Spirit to replace the self-destructive thoughts with His own. When you've got something negative in your life, don't resist it. Replace it. If you turn on the TV and there's something on that you don't want to watch, you don't just sit there and tell yourself not to watch it. You change the channel. You replace it immediately. You choose what you dwell on. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the thoughts you need to focus on. He'll do it. He will change your perspective, and that will change your life. We lie to ourselves all the time. I haven't gained any weight. I'm not hurting anyone. My kids may not be succeeding, but at least they're not out doing stupid stuff or in jail. No one even noticed. But one lie is more dangerous than most. It's not really a problem. We tell ourselves that our finances aren't a problem, our kids' behavior isn't a problem, our Mary egg isn't in trouble, and our temper isn't out of control. Lying to ourselves is the number one way we mess up our lives. The Bible says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 1 John 1, 8 Sin causes us to deceive ourselves, and deception causes us to sin. Behind every self-defeating act in our lives is a lie we've believed. Either we've lied to ourselves or we've believed one of Satan's lies. The Bible says our heart is deceitful above all things. Jeremiah 17, 9. You and I have an amazing ability to lie to ourselves. It's time to stop. Stop rationalizing. Stop minimizing your behavior. Stop excusing behaviors. Stop tolerating. Just stop. To stop defeating yourself doing all of those self-defeating behaviors that cripple your ability to follow Jesus faithfully, you have to stop deceiving yourself. Jesus said, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8.32 But first, the truth will make you miserable. You can't break free from these self-defeating behaviors if you won't admit they exist. You can't beat the problem if you're lying to yourself about it. 
Victory starts with telling the truth about yourself and those you love and being willing to do something about it. You can't defeat temptation if you don't understand how it works. The only good thing we can say about Satan is that he doesn't have any new ideas. He's used the same temptations over and over since humanity was created. The tactics he used on Adam and Eve are the ones he's still using today. God had clearly told Adam and Eve they could eat from any tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. When Satan tempted Eve, he asked her something like, Did God really say to not eat this? And then he said, Go ahead and try it. You're not going to die if you eat this. You're going to be a god yourself. Satan uses that same pattern in your life every day. First, it starts with a wrong desire inside you, like envy, lust, or impatience. Or it starts with a right desire, like for food or love, but with the temptation to fulfill it in the wrong way at the wrong time. Satan can take any desire and make it destructive. Then he causes you to doubt God's word and whispers, Did God really say that? He takes the seed of your doubt and grows it into a lie he knows you are vulnerable to accepting. Behind every sin is a lie you choose to believe. Remember, Satan is crafty. He knows where in your life you are most likely to fall, and he focuses on turning your doubt into full-blown deception. When you believe Satan's lie, you're saying, I know what will make me happy more than God does. You legitimize your wrong desire. You convince yourself it's not that bad. And then you fall into disobedience. The Bible says, When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit, so that Satan will not outsmart us. For we are familiar with his evil schemes. 2 Corinthians 2, 10, 11. God doesn't want you to be ignorant of how Satan works, because when you understand Satan's tactics, you can see him coming with his schemes. The key is not resisting your temptations, but knowing how to respond to Satan's pred patterns. Don't meditate to find peace. Meditate to meet reality. By meeting reality, you'll develop clarity and acceptance. With clarity and acceptance, you'll soften the need to run from what is true, from yourself. By softening the need to run, you'll find stillness. And in stillness, there will be peace. Meditation is not about feeling good. It's about feeling what you're feeling with good awareness. Just so happens that eventually this makes you feel good. So many emotions get stuck because we don't experience them fully. They never get the chance to be felt, processed, and let go. Instead, we only partially acknowledge them, or worse, ignore and suppress them entirely, which leads to long-term stress, numbness, illness, relationship issues, and projection. Take time to slow down. Feel what is true. Allow your experience to move through you rather than being blocked by you. God, whatever it is that you have for me, prepare me for it. Make me ready, make me whole, and help me come to a place where I can accept good things and not find reasons to self-sabotage them. I have been specific before in the past, and I realize that I don't always know what I need or want, and I always end up feeling like I am missing something. So help me become full on my own, so I don't search for what's missing inside of me and others. I have been through some situations that still hurt me a lot. I have been let down and disappointed, so help me to trust. I have also been the one who has hurt people by projecting pain on them that I kept bottled inside, so help me find peace so that I don't hurt others because I am hurting. Allow me to enter new beginnings with an open but rational mind and a clean slate. 
I don't want to bring my baggage to new places anymore. I don't want my past to have me afraid of everything because I'm so worried about being hurt. I want to be comfortable with my own company, so I will be okay with letting things go that aren't for me, and I don't feel the need to force or beg them to stay. Help me be able to see the difference between what I want for myself and what you want for me, so that my desires and impatience not continue to be why I settle. I don't want anything to ain't the one who sent it, period. Dear Heavenly Father, we now that faith believes in what is promised, even when it is not yet seen. We know Abraham was a great man of faith. You asked him to do things that most of us would find challenging to do. You asked him to leave his family and friends and all that was known and comfortable to go to an unfamiliar land. And that paled in comparison to when you asked him to sacrifice his beloved son. When we put ourselves in his shoes, it is hard to imagine the kind of faith that he had in that most gut-wrenching of situations. Abraham trusted your promise to give him many descendants. He didn't know what you were going to do or how you were going to do it, but he submitted to your will and he obeyed. The Bible tells us that everything that is written in Scripture was written to give us hope and to encourage us. You often ask us to do difficult things that push us out of our comfort zone. You allow difficult situations in our lives where we must choose to surrender to your will and to obey your commands. You often put us in situations where it makes no earthly sense to trust you, but everything you ask of us serves a purpose. When we can't understand your will or your ways, we have to trust your heart. We have to trust your character and your past faithfulness. We have to know that you always have our best interests in mind. Help us to be willing to step out in faith when you call us to do something uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Help us to be like the heroes of faith that we read about. Many of us find ourselves in unfamiliar situations right now. We have new normals. Things are changing and the changes hurt. We feel the losses. At times, we feel scared and uncertain. Letting go of the familiar and known and embracing the unknown is never easy. Help us to believe that what is unknown to us is known to you. Help us to grow in these places of change. Help us to trust that you see the bigger picture of our lives. Help us to cling to your promises and have the faith to believe that what you promised, you will bring to pass. You have a very long track record of fulfilling prophecy and your promises. You move heaven and earth to make things happen, and not one word of yours will you ever go back on. Help us to trust like Abraham that you are who you say you are and what you say you will do, you why do. We don't know what our future holds, but we know that you hold our future. Help our hearts to be at peace as we look to you to fulfill your plans and purposes in lives. In the name of our Savior Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Never thought I would say this, but I'm happy that life delayed some of my blessings. This universe truly knows divine timing and won't let you choose anything from a broken place, especially if you've been praying for the best outcomes. Partial obedience will delay the promise. When God says go, go. When God says do, do the only thing standing in the way of you getting where God wants you to go is you. Stop doubting, let go of fear, and move. I love giving chances to repair with people who are truly working on themselves, but when I see someone is exactly in the same place they were when I disconnected myself from them, and the only difference now is they have found a new way to dress up their flaws, I just cannot. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, 41. KJV, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, Mark 9, 48, K.
KJV. Once in hell, the rich man, Luke 16, 19, 31, KJV, understood that eternal punishment for sin is justified and deserved because mankind has sinned against an eternal, thrice holy God, which is why he didn't question or protest that he didn't belong in hell. Every human deserves to go to hell because we are naturally enemies of God and slaves of sin. That is our state from our very beginning. Adam stood as God's chosen representative of all mankind in the Garden of Eden. And when he fell, we all fell, because we are all the children of Adam. It is through him that sin entered the world, and death and hell are the consequences of sin. Those sins that you excuse, minimize, rationalize, glorify, and enable are the same sins that you will have to answer for on Judgment Day. The only hope for us to escape. Hell, and the only reason any human does not go to hell, is because of the perfectly obedient life and the merciful, sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. He stood as our one and only substitute and took our punishment on himself so that all those who believe him as their savior can be saved. And it is through faith in him that those who believe in him escape. Hell, receive life eternal, abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and a home in heaven. When alive, people think that they are good and don't deserve to go to hell and keep rejecting Christ as their Savior. But after they draw their last breath on earth, they will stand before the judgment throne of a thrice holy God, and they will know that they are filthy sinners, and they surely deserve hell, and that Jesus Christ is the only way to escape it. But having rejected him when alive, they have lost their opportunity to escape hell, and they will now have to pay for their sins for all eternity in the flames of hell. Repent and get right with Jesus Christ before it is too late for you. Mankind is guilty before God for believing the doctrine of Oranes, or Oneism, which teaches the divinity of nature and divinity of man, that God, man, and nature all share the same essence, that each of the three domains are fundamentally one. One-ism is a form of spiritual holism where everything is considered divine because everything is an aspect of God's. Core beliefs of one-ism include monism, all is one, pantheism, all is God, and mysticism, the experience of oneness with the divine. Oneism teaches all is one and one is all. All is one, pantheism. Everything in the world is interconnected, no matter how disconnected they are, and they are all part of the one entity, the universe God. One is all, panentheism. The universe God, an all-pervading entity, is what makes up everything. Pantheism means that all is God. Panentheism, that all is in God. Oneism teaches what God says mankind is guilty of, the divinity of nature, nature worship idolatry, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, Romans 1.25, KJV, the divinity of man, human worship idolatry. In the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, 4, 5, KJV The doctrine of oneness originated with Satan and is based on one's feelings rather than the word of God. The feelings of oneness is experienced through a form of alternative spiritual practice, often connected to neurochemical stimulation. This sense of oneness is grounded in the mystical and or ecstatic, 
and may be stimulated through mystic practices and rituals and also by psychedelic or entheogen drugs substances. It is a feeling of boundary dissolving wholeness, timelessness and flow, blurring the lines between divinity, humanity and nature. Because of these features, it has immense influence upon the construction of world views related to the perceived new reality of the New Age movement. The doctrine of oneness, one-ism, is dishonoring to our holy God. So is the inordinate focus on creation. God is separate from his creation and is not one with it, and no person is divine but is a filthy sinner before a thrice holy God. The idea that we are gods and or that all is God is blasphemous. It is antichrist at the core. 1 John 2.22-23 Adam is given the leadership role in the relationship. This means he is not to be passive, but to take initiative. Like Jesus, men are catted to pursue, lead, protect, and provide. Pursuing has two parts, taking initiative and accepting the leadership role in a relationship. God made the polarities of men, masculine and women, feminine, to complement each other. Men are to initiate, pursue, and women are to respond. Men are to lead and women are to assist, be helpmeets. Men are to provide and women are to nurture. Men are to protect, and women are to beautify. But the fall of man into sin impacts the masculinity of men and takes it to opposite extremes. Instead of taking initiative in a godly way, men are in selfish pursuit, using women for self-satisfaction. Thus men become passive and won't risk rejection. Instead of leading in a godly way, men become overly controlling, harsh, and thus abdicate their godly leadership. Instead of providing in a godly way, men become financially irresponsible, not providing for their loved ones. Sometimes they may provide for financially and materially, but do not provide emotional and spiritual needs of women and become callous and self-centered and care only about their emotions. Instead of protecting in a godly way, men become apathetic and indifferent, thus leaving the women open to physical, emotional, and spiritual attacks. God has ordained men to be leaders, providers, and protectors, and to be in places of authority, and he created women to be nurturers, counselors, and helpmeet for men, and to be fellow heirs in redemption. But Satan has perverted the roles of men to abuse their authority and headship. When men reject Christ's authority over them, from being loving, Christ-like leaders, they turn to tyrants. From being protectors, they turn to predators and abusers. From being providers, they turn to destroyers. And when women usurp the place of a man, they become initiators and pursuers instead of being helpmeets. They become seducers instead of being virtuous. They become dominators rather than being submissive with a meek and quiet spirit. They become manipulators instead of being counselors. They become fierce and without natural affection instead of being nurturers and nourishers. Type 222 to claim it. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Jude 1, 24-25, KJV. As saved souls, we need keeping from sins, yet it is true that the saved ones can fall into sin, every one of them if the Lord did not keep them. There is no stability in any Christian, 
considered in himself. It is the grace of God within him, her, that enables a man, woman of God, to stand and to not fall into sin. Your final perseverance is not the result of anything in yourself, but the result of the grace which God continues to give you and of his eternal purpose, which first chose you, and of his almighty power, which still keeps you alive. Ah, my brothers and sisters, the brightest saints on earth can fall into the lowest hell if God did not keep them from falling. The best taught man, apart from divine guidance, is capable of becoming the greatest sinner possible. There is a strange weakness which sometimes comes over noble spirits and which makes them infatuated with a sin. He, alone, is able to keep us from falling. He does it by teaching us the truth, by warning us against secret sin, and by his providential leading. Sometimes he keeps temptation from us. At other times he allows a temptation to come to us that, by overcoming it, we may be the stronger to meet another one. Nobody but God can keep you from falling into sin. If God doesn't keep you from sin, you would be overtaken by your sins and be abandoned to it, to be swept away by its raging flood. We are but one step, one choice, and one decision away from being ruined by sin. And it saves us to heed God's warning and to not cross barriers that God has placed between us and the ungodly for our own safety. We sometimes tempt God and walk further and yet further away from God and His safety and get nearer and nearer to perilous temptation. We open ourselves to Satan's seductions and temptations and make ourselves an easy target to attacks by not heeding to God's warning and guidance. And in such Tim, only the grace and mercy of God that preserves us from being swept away temptations and seductions of this ungodly world. Subscribe our channel to help us reach 30,000 divine subscribers before April begins. Donate super thanks to support us. Type Amen to affirm. Thanks for watching.